Please, can I ask you to take a moment and think about what you did before you left home this morning? Who did you talk to? Was it your husband, your wife, your son, daughter, mother, father, brother or sister? Do you recall what you said to them? Do you remember what they were wearing? If I now took away your phone, your computer, your tablet, and you could no longer reach your workplace, your home or school, would you know how to find each other again? Would you know where to look? Last month, the ICRC reunited a mother and daughter separated since 1974 when the daughter crossed the Thai-Cambodia border to sell charcoal and then couldn't return because the Khmer Rouge had sealed the border. Forty years later, she called and said, Mother, I'm still alive. This was the first news of her daughter. As a child, I was moved by this book, The Silver Sword by Ian Serralia. Set in World War II, it recounted a story of a group of children traveling across war-torn Europe looking for their missing relatives. I knew then that I wanted to work for an organization that reunited families depicted in this book, the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross. Fourteen years later, circumstances led to me doing just that. These men were evacuated from detention places in Walton, and Bosnia-Herzegovina by the ICRC for resettlement in the UK. As you can see, they are emaciated and many are sick. So they could not go to the reception centers set up for them, but they went to hospitals. Why is this relevant? Well, some of the men decided to go on hunger strike because they did not know about the fate of their relatives, presumed to still be in Bosnia. Some of the men proposed to me that I go to find them in Bosnia. I was working at the time for a National Red Cross Society and asking the, the men for news about their relatives. They had deprived themselves of food, the one thing they could control, because they didn't know what had happened to their relatives. So they trusted me and said, if you go, and this was during the war, please find our families and bring them back. So this is what I did, and I went to work for the ICSC, the organization I dreamed of working for since a child. The ICSC is an independent, impartial humanitarian organization working to bring protection and assistance to victims of armed conflict and violence. It also tries to bring respect in the implementation of international law. Working in more than 90 countries, the ICSC was established in 1863 by a Swiss man who witnessed the dying and wounded on the battlefield and recognized the importance of bringing them vitally needed medical supplies. This man, Henri Dunant, also spoke to a young corporal dying of his wounds on the battlefield and heard his pleas to inform his family members in France of his death. Later, this is what Henri did. So this story and my experience with the Bosnian men tell us just how important it is to reunite families, to inform of the fate of missing persons, or to, re or to find information. What we know today is there is an unprecedented number of people on the move linked to armed conflict, the biggest number since the Second World War. The ICSC has seen more than 100% increase in the number of people asking it for information on their missing relatives. So, if the wars of previous decades and the wars of current decades, they tell us about the importance of family reunion, they tell us about the importance. What do we know? Well, what we know is that public attention focuses very much on the emergency life-saving response. However, we also know that reuniting families, reconnecting families, giving news about missing or loved ones is just as important as giving shelter, food and water. So if those wars tell us about the increasing dislocation of family members 
about separation, about loss. Can technology be an enabler today to help us find out and resolve the fate of missing persons? Well, yes, in some cases it can. However, well, let's put it in context. If you are fleeing war, violence, conflict, maybe public platforms are not the evident place to go, primarily because you're afraid for your life, you're afraid of persecution, you're afraid of providing information that may lead to, to a problem for you in the future, that your information on you will be misused. So the resort to public platforms may not be the evident choice for some. However, technology can be enabler. To give one example of a platform run by the ICRC, this is called Trace the Face, a platform set up by the ICRC to try to provide a platform in response to the migration crisis in Europe. And I use the word migration very loosely here, as many people have fled war and, and violence, and therefore probably should be called refugees. People are enabled to upload their photographs and a plea to search for missing relatives and the hope that others will see this and connect to them. The ICSE is also engaged in other technology developments. For example, we have developed with a tech company a facial recognition app, which we are testing to see if facial visual characteristics can help match with the numbers of online photographs that have been uploaded. The ICSE has also been working on big data analytics algorithmic-based searches to see if the vast amount of information uploaded in the public domain could be connected to the information it has on the search for people missing related to conflicts. What we do know is that if you are not able to resolve the issues of missing persons, if you are not able to find out about the fate or reconnect families, these wounds do not heal and this will go on for generations. Last year, after a long negotiated accord between the Argentinian and the UK governments, the ICSC exhumed for biological reference samples bodies in unmarked graves of soldiers who'd fallen on the battlefield in the Malvinas Falklands War. This was so that more than 40 years later, we could inform their families if their sons were buried there. Their need does not diminish for the right to know. So what of the Bosnian men that started my journey? Well, we were able to reunite many of the men with their families and bring their families to the UK for family reunion. If I could have one call for action with you today, I would say, when you go home, ask the questions to your relatives. If we are separated due to armed conflict, violence, migration, disaster, where would we look for each other? Which organization would we ask for help? And name it. You may think sitting here, listening to me, that that does not concern you. Well, after 25 years of working for the ICSC, what I can tell you is the vast majority of people that I met in war zones did not believe it concerned them either. These are some of the lucky families who found out about the fate of their relatives and were reunited. These are photos of some of the men and women who are still looking. Thank you.